Good morning, man. Welcome to episode two. Right. Let's get, uh, let's get stuck into this project. Listen, looking forward to doing this one, as are all of my projects. You know, it's funny because as, as a bricklayer, this project has my heart, soul, and passion. You know, everything I've got to give, my knowledge, the technical side, my skill, we put into this job. You know, it deserves it. Um, 1870 build, like I said in the previous, the heritage. Putting things right, working with a few different teams of uh, with the client and advisors, inspectors, etc. Um, that's the way it is. So, and it's important. I'm the sort of guy. Listen, I don't want to go home tonight and not sleep because I'm thinking if I'm going to get away with something, I won't slash something in because it's going to save me hundred quid. You know, it's about doing things right. So, the best advice I can give people out there is: uh, as you're learning, you have two ears and one mouth. So listen more than you speak. That's what I'm saying. Now. I'm going to show you what I'm going to start this morning. So if I show you here, what you've got is what the other builder does. Is if you come over here and I'll show you. You've got a double stack. Now you turn this into a single stack and just tiled with a bit of slate over here, you know. So these stacks will be redundant, right? So we haven't got to finish, think about putting any trays in or anything like that. So we're going to go up, but I like to flush them off on the inside and as if they're going to be live, you know. So further down the line, if the client or the new homeowner, I don't suppose will be a new homeowner, if he decides to turn these into live again, then he can. So let's talk quickly about this stack inside. So if I show you inside, if you look down, as it was in them days, gentlemen, all done out of brickwork. You can see how it steps in and steps back, cobbles up. You've still got your 35 degree angle, see, coming up. Now, this was the vacuum of the smoke. So basically the smoke goes up, round, up, and it vacuums from there. Now inside it was important to have a smooth finish because the, what happens is the smoke comes up and it catches on all the snots of the bricks, the soot. And when the soot builds up, then the condensation from outside. So the major element you're working with is the cold trying to get in and the warmth stopping it. So condensation builds up and then it affects the mortar joints and confound it. When that happens, your chimney will start to smoke, right? So it's important we have a flush finish inside. Now in them days, we didn't know anything about the carbon monoxide, the poisonous gases coming off. That's why they start to use the flues now, they stopped it. But if you go back and look at the ratio of deaths due to carbon monoxide or poisoning on these fires, it's minimal compared to probably what the cost is now and the flues and stuff. Now, as long as it was free flowing, coming up and it was ventilated, he was okay. And what you'll find is a lot of chimney repairs you do nowadays, you'll pull the bricks off at the top, they're quite weak. Of course they're gonna be, they're over 120 odd years old, you know, with a lime active. So another thing I just want to talk about is they used to corbel a lot, corbel to get the angles. And then they stopped doing that around about 1930s, 1940s, simply because the soot again was catching and building up and the chimney was smoking. So to preserve the longer chimney, the lifespan of the um, of the stack. They started to flush the brickwork and lean, take a lean back. So you'll see a lot of from 1930, 1940s onwards with the bricks lent at an angle. You'll think it looks rough, but it's not. It's done on a purpose. So a little bit of information there. So remember what I said, stacks, the cold elements fighting against the warm elements. In the middle, it gets squashed and they fight. So the stocks hold the moisture and then release it through the lime. The lime lets it breathe. Hence why the longevity of the wall, okay? Now, it's important to ventilate this stack and make sure everything's smooth inside because we don't want the mortar fouling, okay? So, the second point is, I just want to talk about nowadays bricks are cooked at a higher temperature. The cement is harder. So the brick doesn't accept the moisture, the cement doesn't want it, and it just gets rid of it, doesn't let the house breathe. Now, another key component I want you to, to understand is these houses were built, this one particular one, 1870. These houses are not designed to withhold and withstand modern day heating systems because they didn't have it back then. So it was designed to take the heat from the fire. Nowadays, a lot of these houses are sweating, failing, damp patches, mortar, repointing, and people think, oh, my house is at it. It's not. Create air vents, let the house breathe. So it's not, oh, a few jobs we go around, we put air vents in all around the build to let it breathe because 
the bricks can only do so much work. The stocks are cooked at a lighter temperature, a lower temperature, and you're overworking them with these commercial heating systems. So it's important you let your house breathe. So the lime can do its job, the stock brick can do its job, and the air vents can do its job. If you take away the air vents, the stocks are overworking, so is the lime, which will then will cause voids in the mortar, and you'll have problems cracking, movement, etc. So, gentlemen, I hope that fills a little bit of knowledge. Um, the thing about his filming, Malarkey, is oh, I like to be honest. Radio One, you just watch me film. I don't zoom in, I don't do drones and time lapses and all that. I leave that to the fucking young guns, all the fucking rock stars, yeah? So I like to put my radio on, but they stopped me because of copyright. Can you believe the Beatles and the Rolling Stones want copyright off of me, an old brick there? <laughs> I wonder if they do it if I just sing. So my boy had a good idea. He said, Dad, get one of them earplug things in. Um, earpods, probably what they're called. And you can listen to your music still while I'm working. But the only thing with that is I'm away with the fairies as it is. Can you imagine when I'm singing? But anyway, um, I've got a, a young guy that's been working with me as well uh, on this job. Lovely fella. I'm going to get him in the footage as well. Um, really honest, a real asset, you know, in terms of if there's money, but he'll jump on help Sammy. He'll knock up. He's a fucking good lad. Now, evidently he admits he hasn't done much heritage work, which... Listen, he's only 33, 32, it's fucking going to be the case, isn't it? So I don't mind sharing a bit of knowledge and asking him questions and just seeing, just get on together, you know, that's what it's about. The one thing I've always said is, if you're not happy with it, let's go down and start, yeah, start again. So, But you'll see him work on the project, if you think, oh, who's that gazer? He looks like a bit of an hippie, the gazer. <laughs> he's got long hair, he's one of them Californian fellas who should have been born in America, but he's here. But no, nice lad, so um, give him some support in the comments, gentlemen. Let's get on. Bye. Right, so what we've got here, I've just done the measurement over and it's not working Flemish Bond as such in principle. So we have to do what you call broken bond, broken Flemish Bond. Now, there's a lot of debates about this online. Three quarters, no. Please listen, with Flemish Bond, the wall consists of stretchers, headers, and closures. Okay, so aesthetically, really, three quarters shouldn't go in there. So if there's ever a broken bond, why put a three quarter in? It's like going to the greengrocers trying to buy meat. It doesn't go, does it, right? So there's a thing called broken bonds. Now, with the use of headers, we can do that. So have a look here. What I've got now is broken bond. I've introduced two headers. Now, as it goes over, it will work back Flemish. You see, on the course above. So header, shisha, header. Then above, header, two headers, shisha again. So that will continue all the way up. So this will be our main key. This one here, the closure represents the Flemish on the two reveals, and the main part will be Flemish there. So the stretcher will go over again, Flemish, and then we go header, brings back to bond. Now, returning it, again, is two and a half bricks. So we'll have the same feature, it doesn't work out. But you will see as we go anyway. But you know, a lot of people put, oh, three quarter over like this. No, 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 no. Do it the correct way, gentlemen. This is a heritage build, traditional, so it has to be done as they would have done in 1870. Good.
right, gentlemen. It's not one up here, I tell you. I'm red, aren't I? <laughs> it's the old ginger in me, innit? Right, we're putting the head at a 45 now. I just want to talk to you about this before I do it. Right, you've got two versions of um, 45. Obviously flush with the um, sailing course of Cornwall, but this one is an out feature. This acts as a, although aesthetically looks nice, there's more to it than that, it's structural. This acts as a head drip also, because what happens here, the top one, sailing course goes flush. So any water comes down from the fillet, from the pot, down, down the face, into the head drip and off of the stack. Like I said earlier in the other video, earlier on in the video, sorry, about the pressure of the mortar joints failing because of condensation. So how I'm gonna start this, right? This has to be dead center with the corner of the plumb. So what we do is we plumb up the corner there. So I keep the aris spot on, right? And then she's got to move there. Right, now, lay your next one. How it works is, this part of the Harris, yes, has to go flush with the brickwork, you see? So watch, in, flush. So the Harris goes flush with the Harris of the Corbel course, there. That will make gives us our 45 and the same line. So lay this one down as a dummy, get your level to make sure you've got the right distance in this and just bring her out just a tad, keeping the line center. That's lovely, so that's all in line. Now all I do now is just mark the brick underneath so I know where I've got to lay it when I had the mortar bed. So now we're going to continue this right way through. Um, got a bit of dry gear, really dry. Dried the line right out in that last mix. So uh, helps you get a bit of movement, no swimming in that, you know. I normally lay these headers, point them, let them go, and then come back and do your top sailing course because you do get a little bit of baggy in, it loses weight or puts a bit of weight on in the middle and it can just cause havoc, you know. So let's get going.
Now, ideally, the scaffold platform should have been up on this one, but it wasn't. So where I was working like a mountain, go up the roof. Notice on the side return, I've done a two stretcher return, so I've done stretcher bond. Now, what I plan to do is, once the chimney's up, I will get a four inch grinder, and where we return the header, I'll scribe a line on the stretcher, and the same on the other side to create two closures and a header, bringing us back to Flemish bond. It just saves craftsmanship and keeps a little bit of consistency whilst working sort of backward, if you like. So, there you go. So, drop a comment in below and uh, let me know what you think. Right, so it's all right looking upon the stack when you're up on the scaffold and seeing it. But you have to always come down and look up and see everything symmetrically right and in keeping, you know. So let's have a look at her now. Yeah, she looks lovely. She looks lovely. She dons the rooftop. She'll break the sunlight in the morning and she'll close the day off of an evening almost looks like it hasn't been rebuilt now what I'm gonna do before you comment can you see the Flemish bond on the face now the two brick side what I'm gonna do is get a grinder I'm gonna cut the closures in after the headers that will produce two closures and the header each side so I'll leave that until Monday and I'll do that there you go. Good, so what we're doing, these are redundant in these stacks. Yeah, so they're just asked for the aesthetic look, looking at the, uh, in conjunction with the building. So, because they're redundant, what I'm gonna do is put slating at the top. So you can see me slate there. What I've done is I've put one, two, three layers in the slate. Now we've got a spinal wall coming, but it's all bonded in to the um, external work. Now slate is great for damping. If any water comes through, it's gonna be hard push to get through this slate, as you know. So the two pots will sit lovely, bedded on here. It's all slated on, and then we'll apply what I call our sandwich fillet around the edge of the pots, and then the fillet on top of that. So, always use slate. I see people using slabs and stuff like that. You know, always use slate, just in case that water does penetrate through. Good. See, who done the, um, uh, the brickwork before? Your brother, wasn't it? Uh, what was your brother? Talk about these stacks quickly. Right, you see the header course in here? We've done it at 35, not at 45. Now, it's not just the aesthetic detail look on this, right? They've got a structural purpose. They hack as a head drip. So the water hits the fit, it comes down. As it comes on the header, it keeps the water off the face of the chimney, therefore giving the chimney lifespan a greater longevity. Now, 
As Fergie does look like a detail and it does go nice, but it just shows you the simple size, how clever he was back in the 1800s. Right, my next tip. Here, create a valley, just brush it in. Makeup brush, brush it in. So no water sits, it goes down. Make your way around. Now, the correct way on this, right, is to create a valley here. The back fill, it has to be five mil higher than the front. So water hits there, and simply just way down there on it, so it doesn't hold, only on the double pot. So again, five mil high on the back, the water hit there and it will run down the face, come off this fillet, off the head drip. So it's important you get your five mil. Again, just brush your lines in it, it'll help with the routine, rooting the water one way. And then you've got your valleys. And then come round here, stand back there please. And of course, Work car lost five coin golds in it. These coins will, in the future, people be taking work down, be finding these coins will be worth a lot of money, all dating back to us men, men of our times. Look at the king pot, we go back there. I like the way we've double crowned it. And there's matching the detail on there. Here's the winner, Flemish Bond. Bum, let's go.